Now then crew, welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel and this will be the final episode in the big little trailer build. It will. In this video we're doing the wiring on the trailer. Now I've already bolted onto the trailer all the bits and pieces, the lights and stuff, they're all physically bolted to the trailer so there's none of that in the video. That's all pretty easy. As regards the wiring this trailer has got electric brakes and I've never wired up electric brakes before but they look very very simple and I'm fingers crossed they're gonna work now first of all I'll take you a quick look around the trailer and you can see what we've done here we go Used. Right, where do we start? Come around this side. Okay, so from the front of the trailer, there will be a wire with a, with a coupling that connects onto the Jeep. And the wiring is going to run down here on these little clips to the junction box. And that's the controller, the adjuster for the electric brakes. We've got the wires going into the junction box. That's a rubber light box, but more on that shortly. And then from there, so that, that wire will go in here. <clears throat> And then we'll, magic will happen in here, we'll cover all that. And then the two outlets there, look. Top one probably for the electric brakes, bottom one for the lights. All separate harnesses. And then they'll run around these clips here and go to the various points on the trailer. The trailer light wiring harness will clip to these two little rails here to keep it all away from the moving parts of the Cruise Master suspension. And on the Cruise Master suspension, they've got that really well done actually. They've got some little zip tie holes there look for your wiring then couples onto the bits that are in the bags at the moment which is the wires it's only two wires uh, i don't think it matters too much which way around it goes for polarity it's only a coil a coil magnetic uh, electromagnet inside so it'll just energize when the brakes come on and the strength of that magnetic field basically will be controlled by the controller it's just a variable resistor i think in there so looking from the back and at the moment the trailer hasn't got the bike rack or the pod on. I have installed the handbrake now, that's all done. So there you go. Just got basic trailer lights, indicator, tail light, and stop light. And the number plate lights is integrated into the tail lights. So it's even it's even simpler. There's, there isn't a separate number plate light to worry about. Okay, back to the bench. Now, the pressure is on. We, we leave in 14 hours time. Yes, nothing like leaving things till the last minute, Andy. I know. Tell me about it. The bench is a complete mess. I've still got reflectors to install somewhere on the trailer, probably on the mud guards. That, that's incidental. Um, now, what we've got to do the wiring. Let's have a look. So that junction box, first of all, is uh, it's made by Rubberlite, which is a UK company, and it's sold here in New Zealand under the Narva brand, and that's the part number there. They are not cheap, $88 I have seen those uh, little rubber light things for. They've got what I call a chocolate block inside, so we've got plenty of those to play with. And they're pretty high capacity, you can put quite a few wires into one of those, which is really good, because we need to do that. And what I really like about them is it's got a clear cover, so you can spot any kind of you know corrosion or whatever that's in there without taking the whole thing apart. Uh, or if a wire's come loose or something. So was, uh, they were actually a really good little junction box. I've used them a lot in the UK and uh, you know, fully recommend those. Now, the wiring of the electric brakes, because the lights is easy, right? Uh, the wire electric brakes, we've got two options, it says here. And we're using, even though it's a Cruise Master suspension system, we're using a Trojan, well actually it's called Viking actually, Viking trailer parts. That is the kit, that's the part number on there, that's the little adjustable knob device. And it says in here, this is V2926 by the way, Universal Braking Controller it's called. Now it features 12 or 24 volt operation, it's got a soft start so it just eases the brakes on gently. Uh, it's got a reverse lockout if you want, so if you wire in your reverse light wire into it, it'll disable the brakes when you're going backwards. 
Uh, it's got an LED for operation and fault indication, overload and short circuit protected. That's good in case we make a mistake. Uh, fully encapsulated electronics, so hopefully no water ingress and green crusties. And it's designed and manufactured here in New Zealand. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. We'll find out. Now, it gives us two options of the wiring. I'm going to put this to camera because you're going to forget what I say and it's a lot better to see it in print. Let's take a look. Now, I wasn't kidding that the bench is a mess, so just bear with me. So, with electric brakes, it's normal, usual, in some cases at least, um, to have a 12 volt power supply positive from your battery with a 10 amp fuse. I'm not doing that. Not at the moment. I might have to do that later on if the brakes don't perform well enough. But this is not a particularly heavy trailer and I believe it will be over braked. I know we've got an adjuster, but I think we'll get away with it. Uh, if not, it's just a wire to run through the Jeep, right? So, uh, on the controller, there's a, there's a white wire, a blue wire, a red wire, a black wire, and an orange wire. If you're using that 12 volt power supply, the white is the earth, or the negative you'd call it. The blue wire goes to the trailer brakes, the red wire to the trailer brake, so, sorry, to the brake lights circuit, the black wire to the vehicle battery, that's your 12 volts coming in, that's fused, and your orange wire would go to the wire for the, that comes that controls your reverse lights, if you're going to include that. I'm not going to include that, I'm keeping it super simple. Now, wiring without connection to the battery on the vehicle, which is what we're going to be doing, We've got the white wire, again, earth stroke negative, the blue wire to the trailer brakes, the red wire to the brake lights, and the black wire to the brake lights. So we can join the red and the black wires together, and the orange wire goes to the reverse lights. So we're not going to be using the orange wire at all. It says here to connect the wiring as above using correct fuse and electrical practice, as always. The white wire must be connected to the earth wire going to the brakes. Mount the unit out of direct, direct rain and spray. Well, I've put it where I can put it, to be honest. They've not given us very long wires, and I didn't have time to extend them. When testing, use a resistive load. So basically, I think, you know, on a brake, a roll of brake, uh, a rolling brake, road, you know, rolling road device. Uh, because this unit uses PWM control, the output is not always readable with some multimeters. Pulse width modulated control. So you'd see it on a scope, you won't see it very easily on a multimeter. It depends on the refresh rate. The adjusting knob clockwise increases the braking force and the intensity of the LED. LED flashing once a second means there is a short in the output. LED flashing three times in a row means that the, the brakes are not, uh, no brakes are actually connected. So that's an interesting one. So we'll keep our eye open for those two. So, what else have we got? Actually, we have, to do this particular job, I bought some more, what we call, 7-core cable. This is OAX, a pretty good brand, actually, OAX. This is 2.5mm, 7-core, 10 meters long. We've got plenty of 7-core cable. That's not a problem. And I might be using that even to run down to the brakes, even though I'm only going to be using two of the seven wires. I'll see what else I've got in stock. And I've got a lot of sheathing as well. All Nava products. And this will just help protect the wiring, you know, in sort of high movement areas. Right. Uh, now, I've used a trailer light board for the lights because I already have one kicking around. It's already got the plug wired up and I know it works because we used the light board to get the vehicle through the warrant of fitness. So I'm going to cut this down to the right length and then we'll get that wired or, or run down to the junction box. I'm going to do all the wiring at once. The first job is to make up all the various looms and then we'll plumb it all up, make all the various connections. Now, this trailer has the patent pending extender hitch, so we can actually undo the two bolts and extend the hitch and make it quite a bit longer, about another 70 centimeters longer uh, in the off-road format. So I need to allow additional cable to allow for that. And then when, we, when it's not in use, we'll just coil it around the actual drawbar. So, I would say that, that that should be enough there. Look, give it a little bit extra. No harm to have a bit of spare. And then, just run it down there, run it down there, dum dum dum, and to the fuse box so we can cut that off, 
about there. Excellent. Right, so that's the first bit to bear back and thread into the junction box. Now, I can't believe we are right down to the wire with this one. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Okay, so we're going to need a reasonable length of bared back wire for in there because it's going to be a little bit... Uh, well, we can always cut it back, can't we? I did allow a bit extra for this. So I'm just very carefully going through the insulation, but not through, hopefully, the inner wiring. It's always a bit hit and miss, is this? Especially if you haven't got a new blade, because you end up pushing it a bit harder. There we go, look. Right. I thought it important to include the, the wiring of the, of the trailer, because it's... You know, we built the trailer from scratch, so why not? Jeez. Hang on. More blade required. Just in there, look. There we go. See if that's going to do the trick. We're nearly there. You get the idea. Oh, man. It's amazing how strong this stuff can be. There we are. Right. Okay, so in here, we've got one, two, three, we've got five wires. So yeah, this is a five core. Huh. Okay, well, that might not be enough. We might, I, might, <laughs> I might need to use some of that new wire, actually. So that's, the white is the ground. That is very, very thin wire as well. I don't think this is up to running the trailer brakes. Bet you didn't plan on that. <laughs> so anyway, that's ground. That's your, your negative, your earth. Uh, those two are indicators. I always forget which way around they are, but we'll work it out. Uh, red is brakes. And I think on this one, they must have used black for your tail light. Normally that's brown on an English trailer. Okay, I'm going to go and cut a similar length of wire from my new cable. And, and then we'll proceed. Ha! <laughs> I'm back. Right. This is what I was expecting to see inside the wire. Seven cores, but we didn't get that. So we've got white, which is the earth. We've got red and brown, which will be brake lights, tail lights. And we've got yellow and green here, look, which will be the two indicator circuits left and right. That leaves us a black and a blue. And I'm going to use the blue later on, if need be, for the 12 volt supply from the battery. Now I know it's blue and not red, but that's fine as long as we know what it is. That's it's my trailer, end of the day. Um, so, but that's why we needed a seven core cable, not five, because I needed a spare wire. I could even put those two together because it is quite a high current circuit. It says a 10 amp fuse. So, you know, I could actually use the black and the blue to carry that current. I've got those two spare wires. But at the moment, we're not going to use them, but I won't be cutting them down. We're going to leave those nice and long so that there's still plenty of, you know, wire for the junction box. So, for now, these are the wires we're going to use. And I could even actually tape that back onto the, onto the, onto the loom if need be, you know, just to keep it out of the way and keep the fuse box, maybe the uh, junction box a little bit tidier. Anyway. I need to bear these all back a little bit now, or do I? No, I'll do that later on. We'll just thread it through for now, and then we'll make up the length of cables for the for the back half of the trailer. So, I need to move the camera a bit. Dum, 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 dum. There we go. Okay, so I can thread that through this bottom hole, and this is the wiring, just to refresh, this is the wiring that's coming from the trailer plug, or the socket, on the towing vehicle. In this case, a little Suzuki Jimny. Right, so there we go. I'll just push them all through. And I'll, I'll just leave it like that for now, because I will tape that back and keep those out for now, because you know there's no point having more wires in there than we need, because it's going to get really busy as it is. Okay, right. What are we going to use for the rear? Well, I'm going to use seven core cable for both the two lighting circuits for certain, so we can measure that up next. Or I could use some of that five core, actually. Hmm, there's an idea. Use what I've already got. So the question is, should I use the new 7-core cable, because it's brand new cable, or should I use this stuff? Well, actually, this stuff is very, very thin wiring, so it could break, because it looks in pretty good nick, 
but it could break in the future because it's already quite old. It's done a bit of work. And with our trailer lighting board, it was often wrapped around the lighting board when it wasn't in use, which puts the wiring under a lot more stress than it would be if it was zip tied to a chassis, for example. So no, let's use this. We bought it, it's brand new, and it's a much heavier duty cable, so less chance of breakage. Right, let's head back to the trailer. In actual fact, we might as well bear this back now. There's another way of doing it rather than cutting through the cable like that, where you do risk nicking the wiring inside. With this particular cable, you can see where the wires are. You can see there's, there's ridges, so you can get your blade. And you can just run it down there. Now, obviously, you do risk, again, cutting it, cutting the inner wires. But if you're careful, you should be all right. And then you can hold the inners and just pull that back, just bear it back. And I want to leave about, I don't know, maybe four or five inches of wire because I don't want to risk having, having it too short when I come to wiring it all up inside the junction box. Probably a little bit more than that. There's no hair. I can always cut this shorter, but I can't really make it very longer very easily. And then once you've got that tail, you can just cut that off, making sure there's no wires inside. There we go, just off camera. What a numpty. Okay, now the next job, probably tidy that up a little bit. The side cutters are on the trailer, so that's why I'm not using those, because that involves going to go and get them. There we go, right. Insulation tape, or insulting tape, as I like to call it. I'm just gonna put a little bit around the end there, look, just to tidy it up, keep everything together. Probably two or three wraps would be enough. There we go, don't wanna go mad. Okay, and we can just cut that through there. There we go. Always a good idea when you're doing wiring to have clean hands, because when you've got oily hands, it stops your insulation tape from working. But again, haven't been inside to wash my hands for a bit. Okay, so we can thread that into the junction box as well. And this will probably be, or oh, let's do the, right hand side of the trailer with this we'll thread it all through the coupling zip tie it all into place and then we can have a bit of spare at the other end and then cut it to length <laughs> right now it's a bit hard for you to see but i've already cut these and i might need to make them a bit bigger but we'll wait and see so first job grab yourself some silicon spray and put a bit inside inside the uh, little grommety thing and that makes it help it really helps the wires to go through there and gets the rubber to stretch it's a bit hard to get it started we'll start off with a few wires now i know this is massive overkill because we're only going to use uh, four of these wires per side which leaves three spare but hey i don't have any four core cable and it's sometimes always better to use a cable with a few spare wires because if you get a wiring fault you can just, if you're stuck at the side of the road, you can use one of the other wires. And it's already in the loom. Yeah, it's going to be pretty tight with two of those in there. Because I've got two cables for the uh, rear, rear lights and stuff. And then two more cables coming out of here as separate looms just to the brakes on the trailer. I don't want to have any more junction boxes anywhere. I want everything to happen in this one junction box. So I'm going to take that back out and cut that down a bit to make the whole... The further down you cut it, the bigger the hole is. So I'll cut it down, be another five mil or so, and then that should make life easier getting the second one in. Right, I'm sure the focus will get really upset now. I'll just set the focus, there we are. Focus is locked. Okay, let's try. We can always cut some more later on. Let's try that. Not the neatest cut in the world, but it should do the trick. That's a lot bigger. <laughs> I nearly said something I shouldn't say then. Right. This should go in with ease. Can't beat a bit of lube. Right. Oh, look at that, you see. So I reckon we can definitely get the other one in there now. Okay, let's run this down the chassis, see how much length we need, and then we can get it cut down. But we'll leave, we'll leave that 
about there if we can. So I'll get a, I'll just put a temporary cable tie in there because I don't want to pull it through and disturb it while I'm pulling it down the rest of the cable, uh, rest of the trailer. Dum, 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 dum. Right, so this is designed so the cable tie, Mrs. Mechanic made these, these little clamps, goes through there, through there, like that, and then back on itself. And then that is how it's going to work. But obviously there's going to be more cables in there, so that's only a, a temporary one, but I can pull on this now, and it's not going to pull it out of the junction box. Right, let's have a wander down the trailer. Huckly duckly. Right, this is only approximate, we're always going to allow a little bit extra. But that cable is going to run along there, along there, to there. Uh, so they're going to come under there, like that. Cool. Right, let me get a yellow pen so I can mark it. In actual fact, rather than mess around with yellow pen, we'll just burn a few zip ties because, you know, they're already cheap. Thanks, Jared. <laughs> Stick that on there like that. Hang on. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Through there. Through there. Because it needs to be reasonably accurate. I don't want to be wasting lots of cable. And cable is a lot more expensive than cable ties, that's for sure. Right, so that's about right for that one. And now we can head around to the back of the chassis. Really is so much easier to wire up a trailer like this where you can, you, the whole chassis is exposed. It's, it's perfect for doing a video on because you can see exactly where everything goes. Right, there we go. So now we have another cable tie here those brake cables will also be supported on the same bar. They're only a temporary brake cable, though. They're not actually, <laughs> not actually, they're actually a clutch cable off a motorbike. Okay, make sure that's nice and tight so it can't pull it through. And then it's going to come down here. Right, you're on the mug guard, so bear with me. Okay. Hey, pray mantis, go on, go find another home somewhere. Okay, so this cable now is going to come up here. Now I've got some holes here in this bracket so I can zip tie it. Let's get the zip ties between the, the number plate and the bracket and the cable will run up here, but that's for later. This is just working out the length of the cable to be fair. So it's gonna come around, it might come underneath actually. Yes, let's put it underneath. That's a bit neater. It says, it's all about working stuff out as you go along, isn't it? Okay, there we go. So it's gonna come up there like that. It's gonna zip tie onto the side of this bracket and it's going to pop through that hole there so we've got to thread it through the hole now it's a bit coily this wire right way where are you there you are okay and i've got rid of all the sharp edges it's nice and smooth in there when i drill the hole so it shouldn't cause any issues but i might put a bit of sheathing in there or something when we come to the final fit There we go. Okay, so I always leave a little bit of spare. It's going to look something like that. Coming through the light, and we need to leave, I would say, about there, just to give us plenty of cable for inside the light itself. We'll give it a little bit extra, actually, just on the safe side. Hate to waste stuff, but I also have learned not to cut things too short. Otherwise, it can bite you later on. Holy moly, it's nearly three o'clock. That's 13 hours to go until we set off. <sighs> right, I have done the same on the other side of the trailer. So we've now got the wiring for all the lighting laid on the trailer, sort of zip tied roughly in the right place, giving it plenty of spare. It's way too easy to lay it in and not actually run the cable or leave enough cable slack to run it nice and neatly around the chassis. So I've gone back, double checked it, we're all good. So, what's next Andy? Now, the wiring for the trailer brakes. I don't have any more of that seven core cable left. We've used it all up for the bit at the front that connects the vehicle to the junction box, and then from the junction box to both rear corners for the lights. It's all gone basically, there's about a foot, maybe a foot and a half left, that's not enough to to even do, you know, one break. So, I've had a rummage around. 
and I found a new row of five core cable. That's okay. It's not a brilliant gauge. I'd have preferred something a bit more heavy duty, to be honest, because it's the brakes. And we know that there's a, up to 10 amp current flow. But if I use two of the wires together, then it'll be absolutely fine. So I can do that. We only need two, you know, a wire, a positive and a negative, basically. So two wires and there's five in there. So I can just pair them up, basically. So without further ado, let's head back to the trailer and do one of the brake wires and see where we end up. Hmm. Which side? Let's do the right hand side. Look at all those wires! It's getting ridiculous, isn't it? Maybe I should have used two junction boxes, but hey, I think this will work out okay. Where's my spray? Now, this is a much smaller gauge wire, so I don't think we need to cut the, the grommety thing. I think we can get those through there and another cable quite easily. Boom, 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 boom. Here we go. Already bared it back. Put a bit of tape on it. And we'll get that in there. There we go. Right. That's about right. Now, this fortunately is the short side for the wiring. So, it's got to go down the trailing arm of this one. So, that'll work. We're on there. We're on there. And then, we have to snick down there by the looks of it. Yep, okay. Right, we'll need some more cable ties. Right, said Fred. Where's that wire gone? Okay, without knocking the camera, Andy. So, we're just going to bring it round, and then it, I can zip tie that one. Hang on. I know you can't see this bit, but just bear with me. Just going to chuck a zip tie in there. A temporary zip tie in there and in there just to hold it I don't, I don't want to pull it again you see in fact I've already pulled it so I've pushed it back okay right plenty of slack I'll tidy it up later on that's good now it needs to go down there and if you look down here that's the first of three little zip tie mounts they're actually a laser cut out of the steel. Really good idea. Makes it so much easier to secure cables and stuff. Somebody's really thought about this at uh, Cruise Master. So well done, whoever that was. Good job. So I'm going to run that down there under the brake cable because it has to go down to the drum, you see. This one is quite short, which is good. Not short enough to use that other cable though, but it is quite short. Now, because this, this trailing arm obviously moves up and down, we need to leave a bit of a loop. We can't run it too tight, otherwise that will cause the cable to break. Over time, it'll break the copper inside. It'll last a lot longer if we give it a bit of a loop. Right, do we sit it on top? Or do we sit it, no, I think at the side actually. I think at the side would be better in case it gets pinched. It won't get squashed. I don't think it would do anyway, but good practice. I'm gonna cut all the tails off later on. Right, we'll do the next one. In fact, you can come up here now. Look at that for a shot. I use a mag mount base for a DTI. That I've then put a fern clamp on and it gives me incredible uh, flexibility on where I put the camera especially when I'm working on something like this which is a big metal chassis so the magnets stick really well to it right okay hopefully you can see that try and get the brake cable out of the way a bit for, for now there we go so that's two out of three the third one is currently occupied by the original wiring from the drum which is a bit further down here off camera under the chassis so you can't see that I'll deal with that last zip tie when I come to wire it up but what I do need to do is cut the cable and of course my side cutters are back on the bench yes okay now obviously the wiring that comes off the brakes is in this bag to protect it for now because we did have to take the trailer for a warrant so let's just do a little bit of an overlap that should be enough I'm trying to get into the there we are that'll do Okay, obviously we won't be using all of that, but we've got a bit of spare if we need it. 
Okay, right, back to the bench. Just look at that awesome bike. It's a 2022 Honda Monkey 125cc, ABS of the front wheel only. Uh, and that bike has 12 inch wheels and it's gonna be ridden starting on Tuesday morning all the way from the top of the North Island of New Zealand all the way down to the bottom of the South Island. It's going to cover over 4,000 kilometers of off-road tracks, whether it's beaches, gravel roads, you name it. That bike is going there. And it's been ridden by Mrs. Mechanic. It's pretty cool, actually. And that's why we're building this trailer. I'll prefer it to be finished by now, though. Holy moly. Right, uh, all the wiring is in place. And I've gone round and cable tied it all up. So it's nice and tidy and I've got all the right lengths and stuff, which is good. What we need to do now is actually take a look at the junction box. And see what kind of a spaghetti junction we've got to deal with. Holy moly! That's going to be fun. Okay, I think for me to try and film me wiring up that junction box, all you're going to see is the back of my hands, fingers, probably a little bit of cursing, lots of wires to snip, and then me trying to get them into the chocolate block. Not really going to benefit your understanding. So I think what we'll do is we'll just recap on wiring color codes, and we'll also discuss again the requirements of the electric brake module. That's the one with a little little knob on the top to control the intensity or the brake efficiency of the electric brakes. Right, cardboard and pens at the ready. Here we go. Okay, now remember, we've got a number of wires coming from the car. And I think the first thing to do is to summarize what each of those wires does. So we've got a, so the car obviously up there, so we've got a yellow wire. And that is the left indicator. We've then got a black wire. And the black is if you have a reverse light. Now in the UK, uh, a lot of trailers over there do have reverse lights. Eiffel Williams trailers have reverse lights on them. So you'll need to wire that up into your car to get your feed for your reverse lights. Uh, the white wire is always the earth or the negative. And often it's a larger gauge wire, it's a thicker wire than the others because it's, it's, the, it's a common return, you know, so it's carrying more current than all the other ones. Now, green, that's your right hand indicator. And now blue, blue's a bit of a burn of contention, to be honest, you'll be very careful about this. Uh, in England, that is your fog light. That's right, trailers have fog lights. In England, here in New Zealand, we don't bother with fog lights, even on cars, to be perfectly honest. Obviously, they don't think it's foggy, although it was foggy this morning, and it is most mornings where I live. What they use that for instead is for that 12 volts power, uh, positive supply uh, from the car, for the electric brakes. Yes, they do. Now, you've got to, if it's an old car, obviously it won't be wired up that way. If it's a new car, they may well have used the blue wire, um, here in New Zealand at least, for an electric brake trailer. And I've still got to check the chimney. I don't know if the chimney has that, that blue wire wired up, and if it is, does it have a 12 volt supply, and is it 10 amp fused? So it has to be 10 amp fuse, there you go. Excellent, now what have we got left? We've got our easy ones now, we've got red. Red's for danger, so that's gonna be your brake lights. And of course we've got brown. And that's for your tail lights. Oh, hang on. Or marker lights. 
you know, whatever you want to call them, the dull red lights at the back. And if it's a long trailer, you usually have a yellowy amber color light down the side. I once saw a trailer with white lights down the side. Yes, honestly, who wired that up? Right, now the little, uh, the little box that controls electric brakes uh, that has the, the adjustable um, knob on there, the adjustment for the intensity of the brakes, that has a, it's got a number of wires going out, it's got white. So all that needs to do is to be basically teed into the, the, the ground circuit, the white um, for the rest of the lights and stuff. So any white wires all need to be connected together in that junction box. It's as simple as that really. Now blue, so that's your negative or earth we'll call that. And the blue wire goes to the trailer brakes, the electric brakes. Okay, so that's going to be the positive feed. Uh, the red wire, that goes to your brake lights. Circuit. So again, the red wire there just needs to be connected into all the other reds that are in that junction box. And what have we got next? Well, black. Now, if I remember rightly, the black wire also goes to the brake lights. So these two wires connect together. So it's very important we're not using the black for anything for reverse lights, for example. So the red and the black out of the box uh, with the little knob on the top. The yellow, you see, give it a little turn, arrow on top. Uh, those two can get connected together and uh, to the red wire circuit. Now, lastly, there is an orange wire. And the orange is for you, basically, would normally connect into your reverse light circuit. However, this trailer doesn't have reverse lights, so the orange wire will be redundant on this installation. I'm going to crack on now because you know we're leaving shortly and the trailer's still in bits, and I've still got a headset to wire or two headsets to wire up. I've got flags to put on the monkey bike. And I've got to get all my tools together and load up the vehicle with everything that we might possibly need on a 4,000 kilometre off-road adventure across New Zealand that starts in less than 24 hours. Yeah, so I'm pushing it. I really am. So I'll crack on. I'll get the junction box all wired up. It's going to take me a while. Uh, and then you can see the end result. But basically, all I'm doing is connecting all the same colour wires together. The only discrepancy is the wiring that I've used from the junction box to each electric brake. There's only two wires going out of the electric brake, right? Ones, and I don't think they're not. They're not. Um, it doesn't matter which one you use as the positive and which one you use as the negative. I believe they're both. I think they're both green, so you can't even tell. It's just a coil of wire, electromagnet inside the drum, so it doesn't really matter the current flow direction. So I understand it, it just needs to be a magnet and the intensity of that magnet is varied. In actual fact, it's pulsed by the looks of it. Um, so the colors of the wires down to the brakes on this trailer just happens to be the wiring that I've got kicking around. Um, you can use whatever you want. I was going to use uh, a twin core cable, uh, red and black, red for the positive, which would also tee in with the red brake light circuit and sorry to trailer brakes blue so the red would connect to the blue out of the little adjustable box and the black would be your ground so that would connect to your white wire i know it's a mixture of colors isn't it but it's the way it is okay let me crack on i've probably got about half an hour or so to get that done and in the meantime here's a word from tool girl holly hey while Andy's doing that, check out my Instagram page, Tool Girl Holly. Showing off, don't wanna have to wait tonight, wait tonight. Better off, I'm gonna find my way tonight. Tonight. Won't you talk to me? 
Hoo-hoo, that was fun. Well, given the time constraints, I just cracked on and got it all wired up. Let's go and take a look. Right, said Fred. Where do we start? Probably at the front's best. We're going to do some testing shortly as well. Uh, so there it is. You saw the, the super fast hyper stuff. It's not super tidy. That's because I've kept all those tails in there. If I snipped them all off, the ones that aren't used, it would be a lot tidier. But they all fit in pretty well. There's plenty of space still in there, so... You know, I don't see the point in cutting them off because I might need them at the side of the road one day. And there's all the wiring. Dum, 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 dum. It's pretty easy actually, once you plan your attack. Coming down there, like you can see, we've got the trailer lighting wires coming down there. And you can see on the swing arm going across. And I was correct, the electric brakes, which is this wire here, inside that sheathing are two green wires. They're not, they're, there's no polarity, it doesn't matter which way around they go. And I used the red and the brown as the, uh, the power feed. So that's connected to the brake circuit. And I used the white and the green for the negative. That's the ground side. And I used some motorcycle connectors on there, some nice seal connectors. And I think there's, it's not going to catch anything unless we get go through any kind of you know with loose branches and stuff. I think it's pretty well protected up there. And of course the same on that side. Uh, so we should test the lights, really, shouldn't we? See if it all works. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Right. I'll stick you on the tripod because I need more than one hand. Right. Up you go. Dum 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 dum. So. Looking at the plug, I've just rigged up a battery. You can do better than that. We have got a ne battery negative on the middle one, that's your ground. And if we go on to that one there, that should be the left hand indicator. Let's go and check that. fact I'll set you up at the back okay you're all set up at the back that's the left hand indicator that's on okay now right hand indicator check and I think this is the brake lights no tail lights there we go and oh you hear that Interesting. Three flashes, what does that mean? I'm going to rig up the charger. I think the battery's about to go flat. Seems to be working okay now. Cool. Okay, where were we? So, brake lights, that's the brakes energizing. Tail lights, including integrated number plate lights. 
right hand indicator and left hand indicator. It works. So, just a quick close up of what's going on at the module. We can hear the brakes being energised. Definitely something going on down there. If we come down here, if I turn up the power, that was that's going to put more power through. You see, it drops out. I think that's because I'm using some really small jumper leads which carry very little amps to power it. So if I power it directly, <laughs> we should be good. But I'll check it on the little chimney before we leave. If I turn it down, it seems to work fine. Yes, interesting. Ha! I was right! Look at this! So yes, my little jumper wires are not really meant for this kind of thing. They're more just for lights as opposed to, um, you know, obviously these brakes use a lot more current. So I've just doubled up the jumper leads twice the carrying capacity and now if we go over here as you can see the brake lights are on you can see actually take you around the back okay so brake lights are on come over here at the moment it's turned off as we listen so we get that little flashy going on and then as we turn it up we get more and more and it doesn't start to flash now it holds full power which is good and there's no smoke which is even better right then crew hopefully you found that video helpful and interesting I've never done electric brakes before and to be perfectly honest I don't know how good these brakes are going to work without that 12 volt dedicated power supply from the towing vehicle the one with the 10 amp fuse I had a quick look at the chimney and there is one of those like a cigarette lighter socket or accessory plug we call it nowadays don't they at the rear you know inside the cab if need be I can always use a cigarette lighter uh, plug plug it in there to get a positive run it down through a grommet and into the socket um, you know the coupling the the trailer light plug and socket and then use say the blue wire and then wire that in uh, correctly within that junction box not a particularly big job might take me an hour to do that it's not going to happen today we'll see how the trailer performs and it might have to happen out on the trail who knows either that i just put up with no brakes or poor brakes right that's it if you enjoyed the video and uh, why not subscribe to the channel click uh, click on subscribe and ring the bell turn on notifications that way youtube will send you notifications as and when i upload a new video so you won't miss out you'll also find me on facebook instagram and twitter Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. You can also email me directly, andymechanic at live.co.uk. It's down in the description of this video. Now, if you want to support the channel, you can do that through Patreon. Uh, that money currently that comes in is going towards the, the build of all the equipment needed for this adventure ride with Mrs. Mechanic, who's doing that for charity for the uh, Alzheimer's Trust. If you want to donate directly to the charity for the, the actual run itself, do that through the Give A Little page, Just A Fish. And again, there's a link in the description. Um, okay, crew, that really is it for me today. This is the last video on the trailer build. I've still got to put the pod on, still got to put the bike rack on, we've still got to hitch it onto the truck, check everything, load everything up, put the stickers on the pod for the sponsors. Man, it's gonna be a long, long day. All right, see you next time. Cheers, I'll run out. And we get the flip up again. Oh.